thanks for coming out. It's very important that you all pay attention. It's very important that you all make it to court in the days that you don't have to work. Look at these trials that's going on, especially the cop cases. The cop cases are the ones that keeps you no job, homeless, keeps you jobless. You can develop post-traumatic stress. You can um all types of problems going on. Your family can fall apart as a result. I'm up here because of the Whitby case. The Whitby case is quite similar to my 2006 case. Thank God I'm not in the system no more because the system will drag it out two years. You can lose your home or possibly be close to losing your home. Cleveland is poor for what reason? It's one of the, what is it? Is it first or third? It's one of the first, like, top three poorest cities. And when you say city, you have to include state also. But Cleveland is poor for one of the most major, major reasons. Most of it is criminalization. Common pleas court over prosecution, prosecution, over zealousness. I'm going to say the name that most people don't want to say. I ain't scared. Because I don't already been done wrong. Bill Mason. Bill Mason. Stop voting for this man. Please, everybody vote. Everybody know who you're voting for. Stop voting for names that you constantly see on the ballot. Please stop it. I'm not against all cops. I ain't scared to say it. But I'm against crooked cops. Yeah. I'm against cops that fabricate police reports. I'm against cops that cause people to go to prison because of their lies. That's why we say free political prisoners. Because political prisoners are placed there because of cops. And not placed there because of citizens. That's all I got to say. The Whitby case, if y'all can watch that, y'all can be there. Be there. Another thing I want to say, when it re in regard to the Whitby case and my case, my case in 2006 when I had it, it didn't result in the cops winning his felonious assault charge. Thank, thank goodness. Uh, but it still resulted in a conviction because the way the common pleas court operates, they over-indict, and Bill Mason particularly put pressure on the prosecutor, Gregory Musman, because they knew the case was false. He wanted to protect the chief of police, which was, I can't think of his name, but he ended up giving him a job. He and I wanted to also, this, 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 I'm telling you all this because this is how it operates. This is how it goes down. Cops don't get fired. They barely get demoted. They get promoted. And they go to other or, uh, departments, and I mean, and, and the saga continues. And another thing I want to mention, the Federal Bureau of Investigation is supposed to investigate all police corruption matters. Okay. Police corruption includes fabricated police reports. They like to make it seem like it doesn't, but it includes what happens. It includes it. Um, and the Department of Justice, they said they do not have the funds to address police matters that doesn't result in physical assault. But that's all I have to say. I'm tired of talking. Who, who's up next?
by a police officer. Too many of our young women are getting jumped on by the police officer. You know, the marches are good, but it's time for us to do something else because it needs to stop. All right, Ms. How are everybody doing? Fine. Okay, I just want to uh, explain something in terms of uh, what we're dealing with, uh, the incarceration of our brothers and sisters. I'd like to deal with, when we talk about free all political prisoners, there's two types of political prisoners. One is the type that understand that there's a political corruption, that understand that the police department is no more than an occupying army, that they in our community to protect not our interests, but to protect the interests of those who are downtown for year and year and year and year out. The other thing is those brothers and sisters who fight like you and I, we understand that they grab us, that we understand that we are political prisoners because we stand up against them. But every poor person, black person, a person of color that goes in front of these corrupted and crooked judges our political prisoners are based upon not having a job is a political setup. Not having special education is a political setup. Having your home shut down is a political setup. The filth that is being put in our community by the city downtown is a political setup. So when our young brothers and sisters are being snatched off the street, they're snatched off the street based not because they are criminals. No, they base because it's the criminal system that set up the condition that allow these police officers, Negroes, and Caucasians, and I had to say Negroes, because I want those Negroes to know that when you look in the mirror, even Michael Jackson had to tell you to look in the mirror. <laughs> so we want you to know that uh, before you put that uniform on, you got to kiss your family. You got to look at your family. But at the same time, you ride through other neighborhoods, other communities, disrespecting our youth. As of the day, once again, as members of the New Black Panther Party, we say this, oppression breeds resistance. Oppression breeds resistance. Yes. And i like to say this again, to the state. And if you keep bringing that in the community, what is going to end up happening? We're going to go on garden, and that garden is going to leave out the poison ivory that come into our community, poison our young brothers and sisters, our winter sisters. I'm not afraid to be a freedom fighter. The secret of being a freedom fighter is to have no fear. It's to have no fear. So I end this by saying this. Long live. The freedom fighters, brothers and sisters, forward, straight ahead, backwards, never. Victory will be ours. We have to have the vision to understand. The fathers don't catch a fire by itself. There are always a spark. And there's always someone who got the matches. Thank you. Hello everybody. Hi, my name is Marilyn Lowry and uh, I'm just going to reiterate, uh, everybody know about this Mason corruption going on and the reason why I'm sitting here talking about him, first of all, I did 22 years in prison so I know how the system works, how it is, the whole nine yards. But my, but my friend, he almost got sent away for life messing around with Mason. Like they say, they, you come down there with one charge and you have 50 other charges on you. He's not in the paper. So I think everybody who Mason has signed off on, their cases should be uh, revamped, re-looked at, the whole nine yards. Because how are you going to let one crook uh, sentence somebody else is supposed to be crooked? I mean, come on. I mean, that's our taxpayer money. We're paying it, but everybody is not just me. It could be your next time. It could be your mother, sister, or brother. So I'm just, I'm just re re-saying that Mason needs Everybody who went to jail behind him should case to be re revamped, re looked at as, as far as they can do it. Because I don't think it's fair. He's going to get out. He's going to get out of corruption. But what, look at all the paper lies he's in these stores. Look at all our paper we got in jail. Like I said, we, I've been down there 22 years. I know people down there who probably didn't do a case and got all the time because of the justice center said, "Oh yeah, we're going to sentence them." And you know why they do it? I'm going to tell you why they do it. They
they do it because you work, you pay your taxpayer money, they want that money. They, as long as they keep you in prison, they're going to get uh, 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 some dollars. That's why they want to keep as many people as possible in jail. So wake up, people. Thank you. 